Revelation chapter 3 verse 20. Revelation chapter 3 verse 20. Behold, I stand. Let everybody read together. Let's read together. Behold, I stand at the door and knock. If anyone hears my voice and opens the door, I will come in to him and die with him and he with me. Let's have our seat. Uh, this is not about ministering to your head or just talking over you. I've also come to, to receive this our retreat program for leaders. So as I'm speaking, remember, I'm also receiving. So most of the word I say here today is not planned. But the program is well planned. But the word I will say sometimes is not pre-planned or pre-practiced. So therefore, the word also go to minister to me. Praise the Lord. So don't ever think that this man has sat, we only has really sat down and look at what he can say. <laughs> no. I really sat down to God and made those lines, outlines out and planned that God would speak through me through those outlines. That's the way. That's the way I prepare my message. Hallelujah. I don't do robotic design message. I don't do that. Where people will speak. And they will, their voice will sound like the voice of angel because they have rehearsed and practiced over and over the week. And then after they deliver the message, nothing affects the spirit. That's not the message. Hey, praise the Lord. So here today we're going to be praying. The way we used to do since Monday, I mean since Friday, when line comes around, you grab it, and then we're led to pray. We'll pray until we're ending. Hallelujah. Amen. So as we're learning, we're also praying it to happening. Everybody say, praying it to happening. Amen. Not just talking. Retreat should be something of experience. Not something of sitting down, uh, sit down and look. No. It should be a matter of experience. Hallelujah. Everybody say, experience. How many of you have enjoyed since Friday? You really enjoy yourself. All right. Are you bored? If you are bored, raise up your hand. I want to see it now. I'll be sincere. You're bored. You need that. It shouldn't be like this. Raise up your hand. Okay. After you, you cannot be in God's presence and be bored. It's impossible. Amen. It's what? If I don't have anything to say, I will shut down my mouth. I will sit down. Hallelujah. That's much preferable than just talking just. Amen. Talking just in God's presence. The presence of God is meant to reveal God. The presence of God is meant to show forth the praise of Him who called us from darkness unto what? To marvelous light. The presence of God is meant to reverse our negative conditions. It's not to complicate our situations. The presence of God should not be begging our challenges. The presence of God should be arresting our challenges. Amen. How good and pleasant it is for brethren to dwell together in unity. The presence of God is meant to have refreshment. Right? Hallelujah. I'm just defining what I want to speak on today, pray about today. God's presence. Now, we're talking about practice of what? Of God's presence. Practice of God's presence. What does the practice of God's presence need to know about God's presence? I won't talk exactly about uh, practicing God's presence really, but I'll just talk about the practice. What the practice need to know. Every other message on that day will come during the Bible study. You know, this, this semester, what your ears have never heard before, you will hear it. Yeah. <laughs> Hallelujah. Yeah. Only thing that is holding you down, that is slowing you down, that makes you to be like you can't move forward, they are going to drop off. Yeah. By the time you accumulate knowledge of God, knowledge is a freedom, liberty. 
you shall know the truth and the truth shall set you free Amen. that's what it is Amen. when somebody is handicapped tell him to consult the level of knowledge level of revelational knowledge of god that's the key church <laughs> uh, i'm doing something now by the time the holy ghost grabbed me <laughs> hallelujah mind you my gosh i'm going to keep saying it because some people think that people don't have a job that's why they are doing preaching and doing the gospel hey i never had a plan to be pastor never it's not happening praise the lord it was not what was not happening I happen to be the, for information, in a federal university, I happen to be the first student in mechanical engineering, just as you. And there was no plan to be pastor. Amen. How can a first student be a pastor? For what? I need money. Hallelujah. I need money. When you just came to this campus, you were young. Coming here and just looking at, oh my God. What? Let me tell you. By the time you are on, when God invade your privacy, <laughs> Everybody, everybody say privacy invasion. Everybody say that. Privacy. When the Holy Ghost invade your privacy, it's the best thing that can ever happen to you. It will, it will allow you to go through all the education. As he allowed Apostle Paul to went through all the, the standard. Hallelujah. Amen. Upon it, persecuting the church of God. But when, it, when the Holy Ghost grabbed him, he dropped all his buoyancy all his pride i said the gospel i preach is not only by the word of eloquence of man but by the power of the holy ghost because he knew through power we are able to know a lot of mysteries in the scripture almost about two thirds of the new testament were written are opposed to paul so when the holy ghost grab you when you finish and graduated you will never forget it <laughs> you will never forget amen. amen all this slow down and, and this and that it will get out of you Hallelujah. And God is going to make it such a way that it will be convenient for you to serve him. The purpose of God encountering you is because he wants to make serving him convenient. It is not the other way around. I'm serving Christ and I'm having a problem. That is opposite. That is not godly. <laughs> Amen. But the point is that the position of your heart was the problem. You always put the position of your heart as if the means of your sustaining life is your effort. It's wrong. He said, by strength shall no man prevail. By what? The scripture says that. By strength shall no man prevail. Who says that? Who says that? Anna. Am I right? Anna. He was singing. By strength shall no man prevail. Hallelujah. After crying for baby, I want, you know, I want to get pregnancy, and they prayed, and, and the God answered in a different manner. Hallelujah. I said, no more prevail. But God wants us to walk out because he's an hard worker. But at the same time, the center of the motive of our hard work, he wants us to understand that it's not by power, nor by might, but by my spirit, says the Lord. <laughs> Hallelujah. Amen. Once you understand that, you have become a champion. Christ has won the battle for us. We are champions. But many people don't claim their championship because of one thing. The inclination of their heart, the way their heart is inclined, is different. They rely so much on their efforts to help their goal fulfilled. Do not do that. Amen. Amen. When I was in school, I was a prayer secretary. I was committed. Hallelujah. Everybody say committed. committed. You know, we are, doing, we are doing a leadership retreat, right? We're going to say, the, in a leadership retreat, we say the truth. We open it up. How we can help you to grow. How we can help you to have equipment to lead people. You have to understand the truth. And you need examples from people. To be able to know that this is a great responsibility. And that God is with you all the time. You need to know that. Somebody needs to affirm that to you. Someone that had that experience needs to share with you what it is to serve. All right? Praise the Lord. I was a prayer secretary in a very big fellowship. A very serious fellowship. You know, in a very big fellowship. One of the biggest fellowships in the campus. I followed my deeper life and 
as, as, I mean, RA, what do you call it? ICF, or the RCF, yeah, RCF. Very big on the cap, very big. Praise the Lord. I was not only satisfied with being an executive leader in the, in the, in the fellowship, I also have my own ministry. I gather people, leaders from every part of the organization on the campus. They, we do, we call it money cry. How many of you don't remember money cry? Wake up in the morning by five. I will take speaker and speaker and begin to shout about Christ in the campus. I wake up every morning. We do that one twice in a week. And Monday and Friday. And we also do what we call this one, I think it's once in a week too. We do one day, one night. With these people, I gather them together. We pray, we fast from morning till night. And we break around 12 a.m. Praise the Lord. To prepare ourselves and do morning devotion. And before we know it, every early morning, people are coming to join us early morning. They were hearing our voice. And we are praying to see them. Bam, 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 bam. They were joining from different places. Hallelujah. I was not a pastor. I was just only simple somebody who is just a leader. And guess what? By God's grace, I still ended up to be the best mechanical engineer student in the Federal University in Nigeria. How many of you know what Federal University means? Is that a state university? What's the difference between state university and Federal University? What's the difference? Huh? Everybody from every part of the country comes there. All skills. All intellectual come together in one spot. But state is really for the state, uh, state student. It's local. Praise the Lord. God kept me. God what? Kept me. It gave me strength to not to be a disappointment as a leader. And at the same time, I came out with certificate, with awards on the graduation. Hallelujah. Amen. 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 What are we talking about here? God has called you here for a purpose. Your presence here is not a joke. It's not what? It's not a joke. So God's presence, when he grabs you, your entire career will change. My prayer to you, for you today is this. That God will shock you with some miracles that will make you freeze. That will make you freeze. You know what I mean? Freeze from your own opinion. Freeze. <laughs> ah! <laughs> <laughs> ah! Hallelujah! Ah! <laughs> ah! Hallelujah! You open your mouth with wonder. <laughs> ah! Really? Ah! <laughs> really? Ah! GPA 4.0. Really? 3.5. 3.8. Really? Really? A A A A in the semester. Really? Ah! Really? I didn't have money, but really? Ah! I pray to, for you today that God will shock you with miracles. Amen. Your leading will not be in vain in the name of Jesus. Not be in vain. Not be in vain. We 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 not be in vain. You will be separated, my God. Say, so I will distinguish between the two: those who serve me and those who do not serve me. Distinguishing. God will do that for you. Amen. People will know the reason why you are here. They will know your God. Amen. Amen. <laughs> so let your life be so shall among men. I will see your work and the glorify God. Who is what? Who is in heaven? They will see your work and glorify your Father. Who is in what? Heaven. heaven. What is the point actually? What is the point coming here? What is the point? If you don't ask yourself a question, then you are fake. Amen. How many of you are fake here? Not fake. What's the point coming here? What's the point? When you ask yourself that question of coming here, and you are able to see an encounter that is point to you, that is the hook that keep you moving. But the knowledge of who you are will take you where you are to, to, to where you are going. Hallelujah. Amen. When you understand that, and you take your you take care. You care to allow God to speak to you. Why am I here? That's, your, that's the hook for your life. But if you don't care to ask that question, you just see Christians are just like, let me just come over. Because I've been doing that in my house. Daddy will follow daddy. Let me do the same thing. 
one day something is going to sweep you away. If you don't have a reason why you are here, encounter one thing will sweep you away one day. If it has not done so, it's because you have not made it. You're going to meet it. Something will have to challenge your faith. That's why we are told in the scripture, be ready to answer every man the reason. In the book of Peter, right? The reason of your hope in what? In Christ. Reason of your hope in what? In Christ. God will provide you answer. And in a retreat like this, in a retreat like this, God should provide you some convictions. What we encourage you to keep continuing with God. It's very important. You deny yourself since morning. On Friday. On Saturday. As people are house there. You, you couldn't imagine. You wouldn't imagine what parties are going on the campus all throughout the weekend. All manners of parties. All manners of distractions. But you deny yourself of, of such and say I'm a leader. You are fasting. You are fasting. Your enemy will go on hunger strike. Amen. Hallelujah. I'm not talking about your enemy. I'm talking about the devil. That's the enemy we have. It's agents. That's the enemy we have. We we'll fight not against flesh and blood. We we'll fight against what? Principalities and power. And the people in what? In high places. Uh -huh. Those are the enemies. There are enemies. There are what? Bible says we are not ignorant of the devices of the devil. There are devices. There are devils. There are what? Devils. I'm going to teach that in the Bible study. Devils. Ah, thank you, Father. The practicer of God's presence. The practicer of God's presence knows that God likes to interact in politeness. And God does not force himself on people. The practice of God's presence knows God likes to be invited. Let me repeat myself again. God likes to be invited. God likes to interact and be polite in his interaction with you. God does not force himself on people. One exception is the sovereignty of God. Everybody say sovereignty. sovereignty. What is the meaning of sovereignty? The sovereignty of God is what makes God breaks his law to be able to perfect it. The law, I want to go talk too much today. The law that God first break was the law of man and woman must come together and produce a child. But he decided to bring Jesus out of Mary without the intercourse of any man. That's the first breaking of the law. Imagine anybody does that today and command a child out of the magician, command a child out of a, a belly. Would you want to believe that that's real? Would you be magic? That's not normal. That's something else. But Christ did that to do that. He went against his own rule to be able to perfect something. Those are the exceptions. Now, but the thing is, God does not force himself on people. He doesn't. Except for his sovereignty. If God wants to make things happen, it can make it happen without soliciting our effort. Without soliciting our permission. Whether we permit him or not, he will just come and do what he wants. But, really, in the real sense, God does not intrude. He likes to be polite. Amen. Amen. Now, the practicer of God's presence must know that each time you think you don't feel God's presence, it's because you don't know what you ought to believe as God's presence. If you don't know what you ought to believe as God's presence, then you don't even know whether you have God's presence or not. And so you keep crying. God, I want you now. Ha, come to me. I want you now. But God will say, I'm there. Just connect with me. God does not intrude into people's by force. And like to intrude, but not by force. Behold, I'll knock at the door. If any man hears my voice, hope on. He could only invite me, then I'm going to stop with him. You know what? God has to knock. You're going to first open. He will say, when, if, when visitor come to your house, will you just say, okay, go, 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 and then you just open, and then you expect the visitor to just sit down? 
Huh? What will you do? Say, please. Right? You have to allow him to what? To sit down. The same thing, God. God is polite. Although he knows you, you are my son, you are my child. <laughs> but he still wants to be what? Respect your will. Everybody say, respect your will. That's what he did to Adam and Eve. He did that to Adam and Eve. He gave them respect. He gave them instructions. And he gave the rest to their free will to make a choice. God, God's God giving us free will is not a demonstration of God's weakness. It's a demonstration of God's love for us. Is a revelation of God's love, not a demonstration of God's weakness. People think God is weak. That's why we need to go and preach the gospel and try to use our skill to convince them to come. And when you preach the gospel like that, it doesn't produce results. You have to preach the gospel as you are commanded. You take yourself away from it and you put God in the center. You, as a point of contact, you preach the gospel and then what's going to happen is this can you let me I, and, and then after you preach the gospel what is going to happen is this is is that the people are touched the people are what the people are touched without your effort or your ego or your cry or your energy or your muscle the orientation that we put ourselves about God's presence can make a lot of difference. The practice of God's presence must really understand. John chapter 10, verse 1. Most assuredly, I say to you, he, but he who enters by the door is the shepherd of the sheep. Who does not enter the shepherd by the door, but climbs up some other way? him and die with him and he with me die with what die with him and he with me so god is going to make a provision for you by his presence only when you allow him if we don't allow god god cannot be present even though god is present we have to connect with that presence of god hallelujah presence god of god is not a feeling let me, let, me, let me rewind that. A presence of God is not emotional feelings. The presence of God is principle. Is a principle. He said, Behold, I am with you till the end of the world. In the book of Matthew chapter 18. Behold, I am with you till the end of... Go and preach the gospel. Right? Uh, finish it. Preach the gospel to all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and the Son of the Holy Spirit. Go and preach the gospel to all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Lord, I'm with you to the end of the age. I'm with you to the end of time. He has already said it. Now you need to connect with that. But 
even though he has said it, he wants you to be able to know that he is polite enough, you should have to convert it. Amen. You have to what? You have to connect with it with respect. Are you giving all the paper? Giving all the paper? Okay. Praise the Lord. All the people who have to. That paper that in your hand, just use things to make some, make some. I would like to see what you have put in that paper. All right? I will have some gift here to give some people. All right? All right? So, I want to see what you have put in that paper. All right? I want to see the summary of your mind in that paper. Let me tell you something. Okay, let me stop that. Hallelujah. Stop that. If the scripture is not written, we won't be able to read it. Anything we can't write down, most of the time, it doesn't stay. Hallelujah. Try as much as possible, as if you are genius. Some people are very genius. They can, you know, at first hearing, they just memorize straight away. Praise the Lord. Amen. So, First Thessalonians chapter five, verse nineteen. Now, to confirm what I've just said, as a God's presence, like God likes to interact in politeness. God does not force Himself on people. He knows. Practice of God's presence knows that God likes to be invited. Now, to back up that, First Thessalonians chapter five, verse nineteen. Something will surprise you right now. Something will surprise you. You see, really, this is in the Bible. Really, watch this. Do not quench the spirit. Ah ah. Do not despise prophecies. Ah ah. Can you believe that? Do not quench the spirit. So the spirit of God can be quenched. I thought he's the one that created the whole world. And nobody can stop him. How come a man can quench? <laughs> come on. You are thinking too much. Think, think, just look at that word very well. Do not quench the spirit. How come I can quench the spirit? The holy fire. How come? Wow. That's politeness. God is being polite. I'm a gentle spirit. I do not force myself into people. You have to allow me. Don't quench me. Don't throw me out of your life. Don't resist me. Don't resist me. We are going to pray right now. God give me a total surrender. God wants to lead people who are totally surrendered. The only way we cannot quench the Holy Spirit is a total surrender. You are who you employ. You are CEO of a company. And you have the authority to make things happen. And you need people who are competent to be workers under you. Will you employ somebody who is not reliable? Somebody you cannot train? Will you want to do that? Somebody will be bossing you around? Would you want to do that? So, so, why do you think God would like to be bossed around? Even in, in the secular, we understand this. But when it comes to God, we refuse to understand. Why would God like to be bossed around? And also, he doesn't like to boss people around too. <laughs> you see that? Whatever you wish any man to do unto you, do unto, you, unto them. When God gives you law, the law also applies to him. Whatever you want any man to what? Do unto you. Do also unto what? Unto them. So Christ respect that. So he will stand gentle and expect you to relax and depend on him. And he will find into action for you. If we Give him a body language that we are not interested. Guess what? What's going to happen? They say, Thank you. We go sit down. 
That is why many people today don't want to believe in Christ. The time Christ is going to be, be a great lion all over the world that will be consuming everybody is coming. It's the time of grace now. Yeah. It's polite now. That time, no politeness. It will grab the kings and eat their head on the rock. Bula! No more begging. The time of grace is gone. He will become the lion of the tribe of Judah, captain. And all of us are ruling under him. Fire coming out of his mouth, consuming his enemies. The time is coming. When Christ comes, when you join him, the millennial reign, you will see what will happen. But right now, it's polite to everybody. Do whatever you want. It's your choice. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. We are going to pray. Well, give me a life of total surrender. Amen. I want to totally surrender. Hey, total surrenderness does not handicap you. Does not what? Doesn't mean that you're going to be weak. You are not no. You have no idea in your brain. You are just religious and just moving around like don't have a sheep without a shepherd. No, it does not mean that. It only means that you are stronger than your enemy. <laughs> when you become weak, he said, even though you are weak, I am what you are strong. He clearly said to his man, he said, my strength is made perfect in your weakness. He needs that to operate, to have glory. He wants to take glory to himself. So he needs you to be childlike, completely submissive. And then he can enter into you and fight for you and defend you and help you out and sharpen your brain and give you a good future and do something miraculous that surprises you so that your enemy can see those good ones and willing to join you in the chorus, in the song and begin to follow you to trust in the Lord. Amen. That's what I want to do. Pray. Father, hand time to me. Help me to totally submit to you. Open your mouth and declare. Help me to totally submit to you right now. Rustike to braka shanda braka di la bosaya. Vrutike sanda kraba kode yao sunde kabashia. Reveal yourself to your children. Help me, O oh Lord, to be totally submissive to you. 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 I can of my own do nothing. As I hear, I speak. Help me to totally submit to you. Oh, this is tough for my flesh. But you have the grace to give to me. To be totally submissive to you. In Jesus' name, we have prayed. Jesus said, If I have said things of myself, you will have believed me. Why do you believe those who talk about themselves and never talk about God? People always want to believe those who talk about themselves than, talk, than those who talk about God for people. It's the devil's device. What do I call it? Devil's device. It's devil's device. It's devil's device. Devil's device. To hold your belief based on human experience. Your belief has to be based on the word of God. The description about God. Let me tell you today one thing. The true reality of life is what you cannot see. The essence of living is what you cannot what? What you cannot see is the true essence of life. Reality is defined by what you cannot see. What you can see is temporal. What you cannot see is eternal. It's a, it's a mystery of God. It tries to hide things from us. I expect her to seek for it. What you cannot see. 
Because we carry brain, human beings will carry brain. Our brain is our flesh. It's what is fighting hard against us. It's what is fighting hard against us. It's fighting hard. He said, you have choices out there. He said, you have choices outside there. Go for it. 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 Keep telling you every day. Go for it. Go for it. Go for it. Go for it. This is going to... There are choices. That's true. But which of them edifies? Which of them give you life? Which of them? You have to be conscious. To determine. Because... Presence of God is a principle, not sentiment. Principle. You have to be consciously connected with it. You have to be focused. I'm going to pray, God, give me focus. Open your mouth and declare, give me focus. Focus, 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 focus. 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 Give me focus. Give me focus. Give me focus. Focus. In Jesus' name, we have declared. Amen. Now, number two, the practice of God's process, it has to know that they give you the ability to know what voice is different from the voice of stranger. And it has to know that it has to be given the ability to hear that same voice. Hearing and distinguishing is an automatic gift from God. Jesus said, He said, I know my sheep, and my sheep knows me. It's clear. It's clear. Practice how God's presence must know that clearly. Clearly. It must be known clearly. Practice how God's presence must be aware of God's voice. Must be aware. See, I have really church want to go to. I say, what kind of question is this? How do I know what church to go to? What kind of question is that? If you the, the, the question should be how do I receive the Holy Spirit? It should be the question. Are you listening to me? Are you following me? The question is how do I know the church to go to? It's not a question. The question is how do I receive the Holy Spirit to know where to go? If you are born of God, you will be able to hear God's voice. You'll be able to detect what the voice is and that will help you to know where to worship God. You go to a congregation and you are filled with the Holy Spirit. You will know this is not my place. But you know what happened to one of us? Our flesh is dominating. So people will stay for about two, three years in a place and they go tell them, no, no, this is not your place. No, no. They keep arguing and they see they're stinking and they are decaying. They needed to get out. And find a place where what? Where the Holy Spirit is the leader. It's impossible for you, all of us, not to know that God is present here. It's impossible. Amen. Amen. How come? How come you can't know that God is here? How come? One mind, one hour, day and night with the Lord. Crying and God making things happen. Little by little. God starts in a little way. God doesn't just be. We will wait and see how you guys are doing. Are you taking me serious? Okay, let me give you a little bit more, a little bit more miracle. Okay, let me give that. Do they praise me? Do they appreciate that I'm doing little things for them? They despise not the day of little beginning. Do they understand the little beginning? Do they understand that I'm in, I'm in charge? No matter their wilderness. If the ego sees that, all right, they appreciate, appreciate me. Okay, give another one miracle step forward. And at a point, I call it an express point. God just begin to release. Amen. Even before you speak, things happening. Amen. The pastor will just speak, Amen. sit down, and think. miracle wonders Amen. everywhere. Amen. We're going there. Amen. You have to know how God operates, man. God is not going to start. Uh, if it's start too heavy, uh, then that's it. It's, it's fake. Yeah. God is not a magician. God is interested in investment as, as much as results. God is not just interested in result. In result to just make people agree uh, good. But he also wants to invest in the career of the results. 
You see the result? It's not sufficient to make you grow. You also need to be carried along in the result. That God will make you experience it. Give a little bit more, a little bit. Wash whether you're going to praise him. Give him more, a little more. Wash. You begin to grow. That's why David said, he teach my hand to war and my finger to fight. He make David to experience all sorts of things. Little by little by little by until it make him a king. You have to understand this. God is not a magician. How can you wake up the dead and then the dead die back again? That's magic. <laughs> That's ma How can in the name rise up? God don't give me that kind of sign of wonder. I want to say I want that permanent miracle. You, somebody rose from the dead and later we heard that they already dead back again. How many times Jesus Christ raised somebody from the dead and is dead back? Huh? How many times? That's magic. You know. You said they will come, Lord, Lord, Lord. They say, Ah, uh, and may your neck will do this. You know, no, you not. You walk out of what? Iniquity. That's magic. What are you talking about? When God plans something, nobody can approve it. Nobody. Don't worry. People think you are silly. That's why you are committed to God. They will soon know. They will know that the God you serve is a God of the creation of the ends of the earth. They will soon know. The God that answers by fire. They will soon know. Your GP that is suffering, they will soon know. Amen. People that are mocking you, they will soon know. Amen. For God shall defend you. Amen. For God shall surprise you. Amen. They shall come to your abode and seek for solution. Amen. You shall be solution giver. Worry. I'm not going to exceed four o'clock that we are ending. No, I'm exceeding four. No, nobody's exceeding four. I'm going to finish everything by four. Hallelujah. I'm not going overnight today, no. I'm going to end it by four p.m. and that's it. Hallelujah. Amen. Are you okay with that? You want us to go six o'clock? No, I don't want six o'clock. <laughs> it's enough. Amen. It's what? It's enough. Hallelujah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Uh, leave him alone. He's enjoying himself. Just leave him alone. Please let, let him enjoy himself. Hallelujah. John chapter 10 verse 27. John 10 27. Yeah. My sheep hear my voice. And I know them, and they follow me. You hear that? Verse 28. And I give them eternal life, and they shall never perish. Neither shall anyone snatch them out of my hand. Neither. They know my voice. They will be able, God will give them the ability to know what God's voice is. So, a practitioner or practicer of God's presence, understand that they've been given ability by God to know what God's voice is and to be able to know, I mean, to be able to hear it, to know and to what? Hear it. To know it different from the voice of the enemy. So, not knowing where you need to be worshiping God, not knowing with the people you, you need to be working with, the people you need to be socializing with. It is because you are not yet having the Holy Spirit. When you have the Holy Spirit, it gives you the ability to know. Teach you all things. Things you do not know, it will show it to you. You can't doubt, second guess God. God is God. If you don't, if you don't, you can't hear God, it's because you are yet not to have, you are yet to have the Holy Spirit. That's what it is supposed to be. Hallelujah. We are going to pray. Father, help me to connect with this ability to have given to me. 
may to connect the ability to hear you, to distinguish between your voice and the voice of strangers. I don't want to be deceived by deceivers moving around the streets, deceivers manipulating people. I don't want to be. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' name, we have given thanks. Hallelujah. And I give them eternal life, and they shall never perish, neither shall anyone snatch them out of my hand. Okay? John chapter 10, verse 3 to 4. John 10, 3 to 4. To him, the doorkeeper opens, and the sheep hear his voice, and he calls his own sheep by name, and leads them out. Can you imagine that? God likes to call you by name. Likes to what? God likes to be personal. What kind of fellowship you want to be? And you don't want to like to be personal. You don't want God to be personal to you. Hey. People just want to go to church. They don't want personal. Don't come to, don't come to my space. Don't come to my angle. Don't, don't, don't allow the Holy Ghost to use you to tell revelation about me. Don't allow that. Just close the door. But God said, he called his sheep by names. He knows them. He wants to reveal things to them. It's personal. Right? Call them by names. Personal relationship. He doesn't look at you as a distant person. He doesn't look at you from the eyes of the pastor. No. Are you hearing what I'm saying? God doesn't look you with the eyes of the boss or eyes of your leader. He looks at you directly. Through the window of your eyes into your heart. He looks at you directly. Not through the pastor. What pastor says doesn't matter. Well, what matters matter is what God says to the pastor, not to what the pastor thinks. It doesn't work like that. When you have, have that liberty, you're free. You do things because you want to impress people. No, it's no longer. We do things. I do things too. We do things here. Worker, worker. I'm also a worker. We are fishing things together. I carry the gap. I carry the luggage. You carry the luggage. All of us are carrying. So who are you talking about? Who, who is this? You got here. Nobody. This, this sister here, this sister here, they're doing things. Are you sitting to please me, sister? No. We all do it together. So what do you want? Hallelujah. Yet, five, verse five, yet they will no means follow a stranger, but will flee from him, but they do not know the voice of strangers. This is the voice of Jesus directly speaking to his disciples. We cannot hear the voice of stranger in preference to the voice of God. It's impossible. He said, That is my own sheep that I give that I give back to. That I enter into their life. They cannot hear the voice of stranger. He's saying that clearly. They cannot hear. You block your ear from hearing strangers. Ah! That's serious! They cannot hear strangers. They cannot hear strangers. Pastor Toro Mokoshandege. They cannot hear strangers. They cannot hear strangers. They cannot hear strangers. Deception will take them. They cannot hear strangers. Your ear has been shaped to hear God. Father, let my ear hear God. Open your mouth. Let my ear hear God. In my leadership in this place, in everywhere I go, let my ear hear God. I've been commanded to hear you. Let my ear hear you. The voice of stranger will I not hear. That is your word for me. Let my ear hear you. I am your son. I'm your daughter. I'm your son. I'm your daughter. Let my ear hear you. Let my ear hear you. In Jesus' name, we pray. When God encroaches politely into your business, you allow him to take, to take over. When God takes over, that's the freedom, that's the liberty you have, you can ever have in the whole world. Now, once you give God room, after you give him room, you know what is going to happen next? Now, he begins to invite himself without you inviting him. Well, that's it. 
And that's what Jesus did. He said, I can do nothing without him. He let out his will to Christ, he said, to God. Once God saw that, that he politely came, he knocked at the door, he brought him in, and he opened up everything, and he gave him the control of the whole place. Now God will start coming to you uninvited. When you get to that level, ah! that's the best le level you can ever be in your life. Then you begin to be like, you trusted in the Lord with all your heart. You have acknowledged him in all your ways. Then you begin to direct your path subconsciously. So what? I'll just be following. And then God, God, God can just, without you thinking, you might just direct, you are supposed to go this way. Just, just change your mind, just go that way. And then your sources just lying there. Just jam into your sources like that. That's God remoting you. Because you're already giving room. But if you don't give him room when he comes politely, he will not do that. May the Holy Ghost expand your heart with this word. May he explain better than I do today for you. In the name of Jesus Christ. We're going to pray. Father, in this place, that's about your feet now. We want you to lead us here. We want your leadership in this place. Clean, clear leadership. And anyone that is walking in the world, oh, who are these people? Let them be seeing you. Then what? Hey, when you go to a place, when God is present, when God is leading, you know what? You don't need to tell people what they need to do. They just feel it. And the Holy Ghost will just touch their heart. And they just go somewhere and sit down rightly. And just follow the, the, the move. And they just enjoy the fellowship. And they are bringing their friends. I'm talking about. Take us there. Everybody see that? Take us there. Make it a prayer. Take us there. Be our leader here.